Yeah, g'day, Bush Camper Tools. Okay, so what I want to talk about again is this is uh, finding wild food. This is pigweed, and you can see the uh, area that we're in here. This is really dry. This is a dried up riverbed. Uh, this stuff is good to eat, and as a matter of fact, it grows in both hemispheres around the world. Uh, some of the early explorers in Australia, they uh, survived because they found this material, which was uh, edible. Uh, otherwise they would have perished and it's written about in early journals of some of the early explorers So this is a plant. It's basically prostrate as you can see it grows in a prostrate habit That is it grows out flat like that uh, It's very resistant to drought. You can find it here uh, Where, where it's, it's quite dry. It doesn't have to be of course it will flourish and grow up much higher if it's dry And I'll show you, sh try to show you some examples of that later on, but this is it pigweed Okay, so it's a great vegetable and that can be taken uh, to, to eat, okay. Right, okay, on this riverbank here, found a lot more pigweed than that. It's uh, quite low here, but this is it here. As I showed you before, it's, uh, you can, said before you can eat it cooked, but you can also, whoops, eat it uh, raw in a salad. It's quite good. Greeks and the Turkish have been eating it for years and as I said the Australian explorers uh, some of the early explorers they survived uh, uh, only because they found this stuff and started eating it and it's uh, quite tasty it's got like a bit of a lemon zesty taste to it uh, it's good in a salad uh, and of course when there's you know there's not much edible out here. You've got some fruit trees, some wild plums at the moment where I am now. Uh, and a few days ago it was raining, so there were some mushrooms, some puffballs up there were pretty delicious. But generally, vegetable matter, not much. But we're gonna try a hand in a minute here in the river and see what we can catch there. But anyway, some pigweed, yep. Mm, good stuff. Okay, here's how to identify the pigweed. Look closely at this flower as a key diagnostic feature. They are always bright yellow in color. Look at the shape of those fleshy leaves. The stems are green to brick red depending on the age of the plant. But the most important key diagnostic for pigweed is the color of the flower, the shape of the flower, the number of petals, and the actual leaves on the pigweed. And if you've found something that looks like this, you can be sure you've got Portulaca oleracea. Wild plums, and I'm telling you what, everywhere in uh, wherever there's some wilderness in Europe, you're going to find these things growing almost, and uh, they're a real refreshing break. That's for sure. If you can find them, you can eat them fresh. Just look at that, where your wild plums, absolutely delicious. Great summer fruit in uh, the wilds of Europe, absolutely. Fantastic wild plums. Okay, some other wild foods that can be found in Europe uh, are these berries here. Um, they can be called berries or droops. Correct name is a droop, but we, most people know them by berries. And these are dewberries. And they look a little bit like blackberries, uh, but I think they're generally a lot sweeter. This plant's getting a lot more moisture, so the uh, droops, these berries, are much, much bigger. And these are really delicious. There's some green ones on there so they're still fruiting it's September almost and they're still fruiting which is good when the blackberries are finished these things are still fruiting so there you go okay so there they are there as a bit of an unexpected find here on the riverbank but they are laced with sugar absolutely delicious all right so to identify the dewberry firstly look at the leaf the arrangement of the leaves the second diagnostic feature is going to be the fruits themselves. Now these are unripe green fruits. And finally, the ripe fruits, these are totally ripe. They have this uh, bluey gray colored waxy coating to uh, each of the droops on the, on the berry itself. So by the river here, in, out in the sunny areas, there's lots of wild strawberries around here, alpine strawberries, and these are these are really good to eat, very, very tasty. Great food here in Europe. Look at that, lots of them here. Just 
just growing everywhere, all over the all over the place. There's red dots over there, you can see them. Fantastic. Yeah. Look at all those straws. That is for breakfast. That's it there, wild quince. Okay, that's what the leaf looks like. Wild quince. In Europe, there is, believe it or not, European wilderness left, and there's lots of great things to eat and find, you know, out in the wilds. And here we've got rose hips here. These are great source of vitamin C, well known for a source of vitamin C. You can boil them up, make a tea, or uh, boil them up, make jam out of them, or just eat them as is. If you need some vitamin C, that's a really good source of vitamin C. Okay, rose hips, there they are there. This is the cornice, uh, which has grown a lot ornamentally, but uh, some cornice species have edible berries, like these. These are the edible berries here, okay, and uh, they're a bit sour, but they're pretty good. Yeah, so, and they're quite tasty. Whoops. Have a closer look there. That's it there. And that's the leaf. See the leaf. They're pretty good to eat.